Hi, I'm Victoria. I'm a thyroid cancer survivor, and we're here at the Thyca Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association Conference in Denver, Colorado. I'm here with Dr. Brian Haugen. Dr. Haugen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We're going to be talking about differentiated thyroid cancer and the changing landscape of treatment. So, Dr. Haugen, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a professor of medicine and pathology, and I'm the head of the Division of Endocrinology here in Denver at the University of Colorado School of Medicine and Cancer Center. And more importantly for our discussion, I'm a thyroid cancer specialist. As I tell my patients, I, this is what I think about all day. I do research in the area, and I see patients who have thyroid nodules and cancer. That is fantastic. Thank you so much. So we're talking about the changing landscape of differentiated thyroid cancer management. What is differentiated thyroid cancer? What does that mean? There, there are three main types of thyroid cancer. Some people say four, but I would say the three main types are differentiated thyroid cancer, undifferentiated thyroid cancer, and a very unique one called medullary thyroid cancer, which is actually from even a different cell type. Differentiated and undifferentiated thyroid cancer come from the thyroid hormone producing cells, the thyrocytes. Um, and within differentiated thyroid cancer, more familiar to some people, there are two types, papillary and follicular thyroid cancer. And they behave very differently than undifferentiated thyroid cancer. Okay, so essentially, is it safe to say we're talking about primarily papillary thyroid cancer? Yes, okay. mostly papillary, but it does also fit a little bit with follicular, but this is mostly a discussion about papillary thyroid cancer. Okay, great. And when we talk about management of the disease, what do we mean by that? Well, I think the management of the disease, which obviously needs to be a connect relationship between the patient and the provider, in this case, me being an endocrinologist, but others do this as well, um, working together to do evaluation, therapy, and then sort of what we kind of now are calling the, this follow-up part of saying, what is their response to that therapy? And so it's that long-term relationship, continue evaluation, treatment where necessary, and then this follow-up or what some people will call uh, surveillance. Okay, so then what's changing or what's changed? And I think the simplest way I can think about what has changed is we used to think of taking care of especially papillary or differentiated thyroid cancer as one thing. Everybody had one thing and you treated it the same way. We're more and more realizing that there actually are lower risk thyroid cancers and much higher risk thyroid cancers and we need to think about them and treat them very differently. So it's the treatment protocols or how you would approach it with a patient. Yes, treatment and then the uh, tools we use to evaluate okay. is the disease gone and also the way we monitor these patients. Okay, so as a patient, do I just assume that my doctor knows about all of these things? You know, I think the most important thing to always do is to not make an assumption that somebody knows a lot. Now, if you go to a specialist who, like me, all I think about is thyroid cancer, you maybe don't want me managing your diabetes, but think about your thyroid cancer, most of us, this is what we think about. Many people out there know a fair amount about thyroid cancer, but they need, I think, a, this, again, helping relationship with the patient, because many patients are their own great advocates and come to things like the thyroid cancer survivors and get a lot of information that they'll bring back to their uh, providers as well. That's a great point. So then what are some types of questions that we should be asking our doctor? Well, I think first thing is, is to obviously listen to them and hear what they have to say about what they think is going on and what they think needs to be done. And then asking questions about that, especially in the various ways we treat it. Do I really need surgery? Do I need this type of surgery? Radioactive iodine, do I need it? If I need it, how much? Why are you giving me that much? Should I have less? Should I have more? There's a bunch of kind of questions I think people need and, and come armed with information. You know, what we as providers, I think, we don't necessarily want patients to say, I want you to do this. But we want them to be a team member and a team leader, really, and say, I read this, what, what, you know, should we consider this? Great, so is there anything else that you think patients should know um, about the changing landscape of management of this disease? Yeah, I think a few things that patients and definitely some providers who aren't thinking about this all day, some new things to think about. One is actually there's now getting to be this emerging evidence that tells us if somebody's diagnosed with a very small papillary thyroid cancer, we say under one centimeter, which is about you know, a third to half an inch, um, you don't necessarily need to take it out right away. 
You can do other things like ultrasound and make sure everything looks good. And we can do what's called active surveillance or monitor that. They've been doing that in prostate cancer for years. And we are now doing that more and more in thyroid cancer. It used to be you have a tiny little papillary and got to take it out. Not so much anymore. It's something that can be watched. And if it grows or a lymph node grows up, then maybe we need to deal with it at that time. So that's a big component on the low risk end. On the high risk end is we need to do a lot more imaging, CAT scans, MRI, PET scans, things we don't normally think about in thyroid cancer for those high risk patients to make sure that we know where the disease is or isn't and that we can appropriately manage them. That is all incredibly helpful information. Thank you so much, Dr. Haugen. You're welcome.